Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. W will they administer the great, the great, uh, what's the great thing? The great, the great uh, commission? Right. Will the 144,000 administer that? Yeah, it, it will be, yeah, basically like the start of it, but it won't be, it won't be like it will be in the kingdom. Because out here, a Gentile is basically going to have to get the word from a Jew. They're going back to their original state. Exactly. So, so in the kingdom right now, they're going to the covenants of promise. Exactly. In the kingdom, they're going to actually go out to all nations. Mm -hmm. Right here, they're not necessarily going to be going to the nations, but just like back here, if a Gentile accepted Judaism back here, he would became a proselyte. So when it says, "Let us come up from year to year," that's in the kingdom. That's in the kingdom. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're talking about these hundred and forty-four thousand. They flee to the mountains. Uh -huh. The Gentiles won't be able to flee to. The they mountains. won't know that. They won't know to do that. You see that? Just like today, most of these Jews they don't understand grace. They don't know to do it because all they study is the Torah. Yeah, the, the law. Slumbers will be lifted off their eyes. Exactly. You see that? Because you got to think now. No you got as a Gentile over here. Remember, the Gentiles were without the law. So a lot of the things that God is going to command them to do, even when Jesus came and told them about Matthew 24, about fleeing to the mountains when the man of desolation should come, uh, Daniel chapter 7, it talks about that. The Gentiles don't know to do that. Okay. You see that? Now, if they follow a Jew at that time, they will know. That's what I'm trying to do. They will know. But they won't know right off the rip what's going on. No. Uh, they see somebody that they know that they should be following. Exactly. And he going back to Israel. Because you will have people just like the the Greek Syrophoenician woman that uh, uh, Jesus healed her daughter. Matthew 15, uh, uh, when he answered her not a word, she took her place and position underneath the Jews. Right. Because he told her, listen, it's not me for the, uh, to give the, take the bread from the uh the children, the bread from the children, and give it to the dogs. Oh. She said, even the dog sits on the master's lap and eats the crumbs oh, from the table. Oh, and she, so she understood see. who he was and understood her position as a Gentile. Right. You I have see not that? Seen such faith. Huh? I have not seen such faith. And he, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And that's that's the and faith that is. that's the faith that's required. There's two times that Jesus marvels in in the scriptures. He marvels at the unbelief of the people who should have accepted him, Israel, of a Jew. And he marvels at the belief of a Gentile who never knew it, who was outside of the promises of covenants. Mm. He marveled at that. But both times he marveled at faith and unbelief. It's always about faith and unbelief. And faith is just believing God's word. There are people who say, well, I don't believe that you could, uh, 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 we could just be saved without doing this and doing that. Okay, you don't have to believe it. That's why it's called faith. But if it's, if it's there and you see it, then, did you trust it and believe it? That's faith. Just like Peter had all the manifestations he had, but he still depended on the word where he said he had a more sure word of power. There you go. Second Peter 2. Yeah, he talked. He studied more than what he's seen. Exactly. Uh, 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 as a matter of fact, let's go to that real quick. Right. Go to, uh, <laughs> yeah, go to uh, Second Peter chapter 1. Because this is a good point to what we're talking about now. Second Peter 1 and uh, 20. Or is it First Peter? Yeah, Second Peter one and twenty. Look at Second Peter one and twenty. Uh, is this what I want? Mm -hmm. I'll skip it again. Nineteen. Nineteen, huh? Yeah, nineteen. Okay. So, uh, Second Peter one and nineteen. Now for all and, and people are like, well, I'm just waiting on God to manifest this and manifest that. Mm -hmm. Who's seen more manifestations of more manifestations of God's miracles than Peter? Mm -hmm. Who walk with him every day, all day. Okay? Watch this now. Watch what Peter says. We have also a more sure word of what? Prophecy. Where until ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your what? Heart. Hearts. Peter is saying, listen, there is a more sure word of prophecy. All these people that are living off their experiences and living off what, oh, God spoke to me, the word is more sure than that. See, people will do that but reject the words of God. 
You see that your, if your experience does not line up with the word, rightly divided, then that means that's not of God. Now, does that mean you didn't have the experience? No. That don't mean that because Jesus said there are going to be plenty of people that come in his name and perform miracles. So the experience may be there, but it's just not of God. You see that? Now, go back to uh, Deuteronomy 17. We'll co cover a couple more about this willful sin. Deuteronomy 17. Deuteronomy 17, and look at verse, Twelve. Deuteronomy 17 and verse 12. And the man that will do Presumptuous. presumptuously, willfully again, and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God, or unto the judge, even that man shall what? Die. And thou shalt put away the evil from who? Israel. And all the people shall hear and fear and do not do no more what? presumptuously. Now go back to Hebrews 10. We'll finish up. Now, what I wanted to point out to you is when it comes to Israel and their doctrine, they could sin ignorantly or willfully. Okay? When they sinned willfully, that was it. There was no more sacrifice for sins. Because remember now, they could still lose their salvation. Because if they did not endure to the end, or if they blasphemed the Holy Ghost, then that's it. Sacrifice back here, back there. yes, yes, but, but now that's that's, that's it because, because back here, if they did it, uh, uh presumptuously, no, presumptuously, if they did it willfully, even back here, it said they, they would die. be cut off, oh. they would die. Okay, oh. now if they did it out of ignorance, because remember, now, even here, the there was still a offering for sin to be made for them on their behalf. So even if they did something back here, because remember now, the blood of bulls and goats is impossible to take away sin. So because remember, God never desired that in the first place. He just allowed it, but he never desired that. We just read it in Hebrews 10. He never desired the, these sacrifices back here. But he made he allowed it as a because he knew what his son would do for them. Okay? Look at uh, Hebrews, go to Hebrews 2. Before we go back to 10, go to Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2, look at verse 3. How shall we, what? Escape. Escape if we neglect so great, what? Salvation. Which at the first began to be spoken by who? The Lord. Now, so they're talking about a salvation which was future that began to be spoken by who? The Lord. Lord. Who did the Lord come to minister to? Israel. 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 So this has nothing to do with the body of Christ today. Okay? And was confirmed unto us by them that what? Heard him. Who walked with him and heard him? It's the disciples, the apostles. Okay? God also bearing them witness both with what? Signs and wonders. And with what? That was and gifts of what? The Holy Ghost. According to his what? Own will. All of these sign gifts, tongues, all of these things back here were sign gifts to Israel. Okay? Even going back all the way to Exodus with Moses, God had to offer him a son. Even the great Moses, he had to have a son. When he went to Pharaoh, how would I know he's going to listen? Well, that's the first miracle in Exodus 8, the first miracle performed. When he told Moses to do what? Throw down your stick, right? And then he did it in front of Pharaoh's, right? So understand, all of it, they always required a son. Paul says, 1 Corinthians 1 and 22, for the Jews require a sign, the Greeks seek after wisdom. Right? So most people today ignorantly are doing these sign gifts uh, uh, according to this program because they have not rightly divided. Now, can somebody, uh, if, if somebody lays hands on somebody and they get healed, can that happen? Yes, yes. It can. Is that of God, though? No. no. See, this is the thing. Can somebody speak in an unknown tongue? Yes. 
Yes. But is it of God? No. See, this is the thing. All of the, all of those things back here, God is not giving any man a divine healing power like he did back here. That's not what he's doing today. Now, does God heal people today? Yeah, sure he does. It's according to his will. Okay? God is not using anybody to speak in any tongue today. Why? We already have a more sure word of prophecy. Okay? That's how he's operating through the word. Back here when they spoke in tongues, there was, no, there was no word. And then there was an order to it. Okay? So understand that all of these things were things that were spoken about and were confirmed by miracles, wonders, signs, and all these. But we today walk by faith and not by sight. We're not waiting on a manifestation of God in some sort. Right? We're not waiting on that. We already have what we, what we need. Okay? Go back to Hebrews 10. Oh, man. Got to finish up. This is, uh, is going to get good, though. And even after Paul, after, he, after his ministry was completed as far as the word of the epistle, he didn't have the right to freely function in those miracles. You ab you're absolutely right. Because even Paul, at the end of his ministry, couldn't even heal himself. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul had the gift of healing. Why did he have it? Because who did he go to first when he asked me? He went to the Jew first, then to the Greek. Okay? So in order to for the Jews to receive him, he had to be able to do what? The same signs that Jesus and the other apostles were able to do. Amen. But by the time, because Acts is a transition period, transitioning from law to grace. So after the transition period is over, which there is no transition today, there's no more Israel of God. So now all of the sign gifts are no longer needed. Paul couldn't even heal himself. And God revealed directly to him this message, and he couldn't even heal himself. What did God, when he prayed, at 1 Corinthians 12, he prayed three times that God, this thing, this, this, this buffet on my side be removed from me. Did God say, boom, I'm going to heal you? What did, what did God tell him? My grace is sufficient for thee. When you're weak, that's when I'm made strong. Then so Paul said, you know what? I would rather glory in my infirmities, mm. knowing that when I'm weak, that's when he's made strong. Amen. You see that? Sometimes we have to endure, understanding that God's grace is sufficient for us. And, and poor Timothy is saying, Paul, have all this power healing. Yeah. He gets sick and yeah. he's yeah. drink some wine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, right? And, 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 and it would have almost been like a slap in his face because I see you heal all these other people. You mean you can't heal me? But understand, at that time, Paul, no, God, Paul, God didn't allow Paul to operate in those anymore because he was no longer doing it for a sign. Even people today, they may not tell you this, but when they're doing all of me, touch and heal you, that's for sure. Mm. Right? They want to get some type of praise to say, I'm doing this, but and a lot of them just do it ignorantly because they, yeah, they don't know. And the sad part about it is the disclaimer that they have ready after they didn't shut in and pray for somebody and the person still died. They always got a disclaimer in line or something. Mm -hmm. to say, oh, it, was it wasn't God's will. God. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't God's will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your faith wasn't strong. Yo, your faith or, wasn't yeah, strong. or your faith. And, 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 you know, my answer to that is, at what point or at what level will I know my faith is enough? <laughs> Exactly. You'll never know that. Well, that works. Yeah, so, but, they, but they use it because it never comes back on them. Yeah. Right? And I, I remember I always said, I had a guy, uh, I listened to somebody sent me a video. Some guy was like, yeah, I'm about to prophesy to you. But before I prophesy, mm. so you already know something wrong. Because when Jesus prophesied, when they spoke, they never gave a disclaimer. They Amen. spoke it because it was the word of God. Amen. Because he's talking about, I'm going to say something, though. Now, if it don't come to pass, it's because you didn't believe it. Mm. See, but I'm going to prophesy to you. And I know I'm a prophet of God. Mm. So, See, listen, man, listen. Oh, you believe. Yeah, mm. <laughs> exactly. So, understand, he's giving a disclaimer to put it on you and your faith. Mm. But at what level? Because he, and, and, uh, I talked with a guy, the, uh, your friend, when we talked to. And he was saying, I believe God will heal me. And he was in so much, I felt bad for him because he was in so much pain. And I said, if you believe God can heal you, and we know God is, is great, he can do it, why aren't you healed? He said, I just, I just don't have enough. I said, so you don't have enough faith? I said, but you're hurting that bad. You mean to tell me, as bad as you're hurting, you don't have enough faith? And, and he said, no, no, I, I just got to get to the point. I said, so what level of faith do you need to reach? How do you know? How do you know what level? Is it this level? Is it this high? You don't know. Because... 
Oh, because listen, it's not about our faith. And if God is not a genie, when you have enough faith, you rub him a little bit, he's going to come. That's not how this works. God is not, uh, he doesn't operate like that. He operated like that here because that was a part of their program. In the kingdom, there shall be no more crying. Isaiah 33, he did these things because it was a sign for their kingdom. When he was on earth, the kingdom of heaven was what? At hand. At hand. The king is here. So that means, listen, let me show y'all, because y'all don't believe it. I'm going to show you these signs. And they could not go into keeping them lame or halt. They couldn't do it. And did, did anybody back here go, half the time, these people didn't, when they talk about enough faith, the people that he went to healing, they didn't even know who he was. He, oh, he went to them and said, will thou be made whole? He asked them. They didn't know who he was. And they, some man said, well, I don't have nobody to put me in the pool. No, no, no. Do you want to be made whole? Jesus. He didn't even know who he was. So what does that have to do with faith? Mm -hmm. And he was made whole. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it was a sign of who he was as it pertained to their coming kingdom. Jesus. Nothing to do with today. Look at this, and we'll mm -hmm. read this last one. We'll finish up. Really quick, let me read verse uh, 20 20. Mark 16. Mark 16, 20. Yeah, I just wanted to read that verse. Go ahead. It says, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. 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 And see, and people use that, not understand that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is considered Old Testament. Right. Because all the, it's not, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John doesn't start anything new. Mm -hmm. It's just a continuation of something already old. Okay, so when they did, and most people use that today to say that you're not of God. I remember I had somebody tell me, and it kind of hurt me a little bit when I was in the other church. Uh, uh, he said, listen, if you're not speaking in tongues, you don't need to be preaching. Jesus. And of course, I was preaching at the time, so I'm thinking, well, hold on, something must be wrong with me. Mm -hmm. You know, and because I couldn't speak in no terms. <laughs> but but because they don't write them, and, 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 and the, sad, the sad part about it, it may be a, a good thing because it just caused me to study more. But the sad part about it, people who look up to this particular person, they believe and hang on every word he says. Now, if I would have hung on to that, I, I shouldn't be preaching. Because I've I never spoken in tongues. So I shouldn't be preaching. Right? Right? So, so that's why you have to understand. <laughs> that's why you have to understand and study to show thyself approved unto God. Rightly divided the wrong, word of truth. If there's a right way to do it, there's obviously a wrong way to do it. Amen. Okay? And that's what happens. Look at Hebrews 10, 26. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remained no more sacrifice or sins. This is for Israel. Mm -hmm. But a certain fearful looking for us. And notice now, it's we as in those who are following Christ now. It's, these, it's not talking about unbelievers. Okay? Mm -hmm. These are people that are following Christ. But if they sin willfully, that's it. Just like back here in the Old Testament. When you, that, and, and, and you don't have to raise your hand, but I will. There's plenty of times where I just say, you know what? I'm going to please this flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I did it willfully. Mm -hmm. Okay? But this verse does not apply to me. That's why it's a constant battle between the spirit lusts against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. But the more you build up this in you, Amen. then the more Christ is working in you. The word of God is effectually working in you. Now those desires of the flesh... Uh, 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 Galatians 5.18 if you fulfill the uh, uh, if you you get led by the law <sighs> you fulfill the lust of the flesh yeah if, if you be yeah, Galatians 5.18 if you be led by the spirit you're no longer under the law and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh you see that so the more I build up my inner man the less I want to please the flesh does it mean that I'm not going to ever please the flesh? No. no. Doesn't mean that. That's why it's a process. Mm -hmm. The more we grow, the less often we'll sin. And that's Amen. the dangers of the scripture where it says, Behold, uh, old things have passed away, and I be, you know, we are uh -huh. preachers. Uh -huh. People try to make that be a fleshly thing today. That's yeah, spiritual. Yeah, that's spiritual. Because if that was true, then we wouldn't need a, re a redeemed body. Exactly. Right. See, we're waiting. We're not waiting on salvation like they are. Mm -hmm. Next. Sunday when we go over this again, I, I, I thought we were going to get to it today, but I'm going to get to the verses where it shows them that they're still waiting for salvation. Mm -hmm. We're not waiting for salvation. What are we waiting for? The redemption of, the redemption of our bodies. Because where does sin dwell? In the flesh. Our spirit man no longer sins. 
but the flesh still does. Paul says, uh, 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 Romans 7, for the things that I would do, I do not. But the things that I would not, that I do. That Don't that sound like us? Amen. The things that I want to do, which is please God, I find myself sometimes not doing it. But you can't put this verse on me for if I willfully say, because that's not my doctrine. All right? Look at this, verse 27. But a certain fearful looking for the judgment and fiery what? Indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised it, Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Right? That was, listen, if two people, two or three people came and said, listen, we caught you in adultery, boom, you're stoned. That's it, you're out of here. Jesus. Right? And as we continue to go through this, I want you to understand when they did something, it was crucial back here. Mm. When you understand that, you appreciate the grace of God. Amen. Thank you. Lord. You appreciate the grace of God. Thank you. Right? You appreciate knowing the fact that his blood, he died when I was yet a sinner. He God commended his love. Romans 5 mm -hmm. and He commended his love toward me in that while I was yet yes. sinner, yes. Christ died for us. He died knowing that you would sin against him. Mm -hmm. But he knew his blood would cover your sin. He already knew that. Okay? That's why it's called grace. Thank you, Lord. It's not a mixture of I gotta I get saved over here, but then I go over here to stay saved. You mm. can't do that. You see that? Because what can you do that's gonna even be any way close to equivalent of what he's already done? Jesus. See, the person who does not understand God's word does not understand that we are resting in Christ. Right? We're resting in Christ. As long as you believe that in the blood of Christ being shed for the payment of your sin. He was buried and three days he rose again. That salvation is as simple as that. Jesus. And you're saved eternally. How long is eternal? Forever. That means you can't lose it. Amen. Okay? Amen. We'll pick this up uh, uh, on Sunday morning. Any observations, questions? Jesus. Thoughts, comments? No? <laughs> Go ahead. You got what you got, Bill? Nah. Uh, see, I hope we're <laughs> Bring it on. We go uh, back to the three trilogies and then we go back to Stephen. Uh -huh. But Stephen, apart according to the law, he would have been the last leg of the last womb of hope, yes. as it were, yes. With, because of the Holy Ghost. Yes. They, they uh, the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. right? Uh huh. Yeah. So that should have meant that what happened from then on, if not for grace. Then they would have went straight to the tribulation. tribulation. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's what is, when you look at it, the, the, the thing about it, when you understand the grace of God, the fear, notice now, the fear and motivation with them is to lose salvation because they never had it. We're, our fear is not to lose salvation, but our fear should be understanding we will suffer loss if we don't do what we're supposed to do here, okay? So understand that there will be a judgment for us, but not for salvation. Mm -hmm. The judgment is for reward, right? Because there's a, uh, salvation is a reward within itself, but then there is is an inheritance, but then there is a reward of that inheritance. Colossians 3.24 speaks about it, okay? So there's, th there's things that are going to be burned away, and there will be people that suffer loss because they take advantage of God's grace. Right? Let us, that's what Paul says. Let us not use grace as an occasion to the flesh. Right? See, our motivation is not fear, but one of maturity, responsibility. Right? As a, as a child, you don't understand and you don't handle responsibility well. But when you become a mature adult, you know responsibility. I don't need a tutor or somebody to tell me what to do and what not to do as an adult. I don't need that. The grace of God, uh, uh, when we understand the grace of God, it matures us. It's more out of gratitude because of what he's done for me. I do this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was weakening because back here they didn't do it out of gratitude. Even when we were younger at the church, they taught us this. You, I got quote unquote saved. I wasn't saved according to scripture, but I was saved according to what the pastor said. But I was saved then based on because I didn't want to go to hell. That's right, Peter. That, when you were young, you got saved because you didn't want to go to hell. That's 
fear and bondage. That's fear and bondage. But that is, that's not, we, I don't preach, we don't preach salvation like that today. Man, you better get saved because you're going to go to hell. You know? We the, salvation is, you know what? You know what Christ has done for you. You know how much he loves you. That's what we preach today. The motivation is not fear, it's love. Because he did this for me, I'm willing to, to use my life to serve him. All right? And, and Pastor, and so Bill, uh, Billy was talking about um, Stephen, that being the last event for whoever. Uh -huh. So if you close the board yeah, well, up there. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh -huh. yeah, and you went, take Grace out of there. Uh -huh. Then they went straight into the tribulation. They would have went straight into the tribulation, yes. So God, God in yeah. his goodness. Yeah, and but because God of is the, the disobedience of Israel, uh -huh. we have Yeah, grace. because understand, Gentiles could always be a part of God, but it was through Israel. Through Israel. You see that now? It's all Lord standing. Yeah, Amen. now everybody's on the same playing field today. Amen. And God is not dealing with them as the Amen. whole congregation or nation. He's dealing with individuals who believe the word. Thank the Lord. Yeah. And, 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 you know, this is hard. to be. It, it's not something that just, you know... Because a lot of times, and when, especially when I talk with people, most people have been indoctrinated with some type of religion. Mm -hmm. no, no matter what denomination it is, it's something. Mm -hmm. I, I rarely meet people who have, are just purely brought up in the grace message. You, I, I, I don't think I've met one person like that. right? Somebody has come, and, and you get to a point where it's, it's got to be something more to, to God than this. You know what? And that's how we, I know we, we were like their religion. It's got to be something more than just this. You know, I'm tired of running around just dancing, but, you know, just exercising. It's got to be something more to it. And when you really study, there's a spiritual, uh, a, a spiritual word and spiritual meat that's involved that allows us to live a certain lifestyle. Amen. The more we know, the less we want to do wrong. Mm -hmm. Not the other way around, okay? Amen. All right, uh, nothing else? Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you right now for this time of fellowship. We thank you for, that we're able to uh, have a place that we're able to come and uh, worship you in spirit and in truth. Father God, we ask for that you just continue to bless us, continue to strengthen us and build us up, oh God. Help us to understand your, uh, your grace and your mercy. Help us to uh, 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 change our minds, oh God, that we may do the things that we do out of love for you. Help us to not live selfishly unto ourselves, oh God, uh, uh, but help us to live according to the Spirit and according to your word. Father God, we ask for that you just continue to bless this ministry as we continue to go forth in word and in truth. Uh, we ask you to touch Brother L. Page right now as he uh, uh, continues to uh, uh, recover, oh God. We ask that you continue to bless him and his family. Uh, we ask right now that you bless me, oh God, that I may continue to uh, be strengthened, oh God, that I may continue to study and stay humble before you, oh God, that I may uh, teach truth uh, in a plain and clear way that all can understand. We ask right now that you touch each and every member, each and every person under the sound of my voice. We thank you for the technology that we're able to get the word of God out and that we're able to touch uh, many lives, oh God. Uh, we ask right now that your word will effectually work in us and those who we minister to. Uh, touch those who are sick. Touch those who are dealing with issues. Touch marriages everywhere. And Father God, we ask right now that you continue to bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.